Hey guys, what is up? This is Krayzak here, and welcome back to another video. So this one's going to be actually an interesting one for you, because this one is on the mechanics of the Pokeball, particularly on catch rates and on the Ultra Ball. Now, something that I'm guilty of, as well as probably many of you guys are too, is the fact that the Ultra Ball is one of the easiest Pokeballs to buy. It's more expensive, it's supposed to be more powerful, but is this actually true? Well, this is a study to find out. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I've been playing Pokemon ever since at least Gold and Silver have been out. Probably more, but I'm not entirely sure. But, you guys have also have seen my Emerald playthrough on the channel here. And so, I hope that this will help kind of explain some things. As well as maybe change up a couple things as time goes on. Without any further ado, let's get started. So the first ball on the list is, of course, the basic Pokeball, which costs 200, is easy to get right at the beginning. It has a catch rate of 1. Now the catch rate of 1 here is the absolute base catch rate that a Pokeball can have. So Pokeball, Premier Ball, everything that doesn't have a specific catch rate is the same as a Pokeball. So Luxury Ball, things like that, they aren't really that special. They have a catch rate of 1. They might have special effects, but again, catch rate of 1. Now the cool thing about the Pokeball is that you can find it anywhere. It's cheap, it's easy to use, you can easily buy them and not have to worry about spending too much money. But there are a couple better options as well. The second option on the list is obviously the Great Ball, which costs 600 but has a catch rate of 1.5, so basically one and a half times as powerful as the, the regular Pokeball. Again, this is easy to find, easy to use. At the beginning of the game, it's a little bit of a stretch, but this is probably one of your most powerful Pokeballs that you're going to see in the early game. Again, this is good as a early game, moderately powered ball. But then here we go. We get the Notorious Ultra Ball. Now the cost is 1,200, which is double what an, a Great Ball is, and six times as expensive as what a regular Pokeball is. However, the only thing behind that is that it has a catch rate of two, meaning it's only twice as powerful as what the Pokeball is. I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't quite line up with me. The fact that the Ultra Ball is only twice as strong as the Pokeball, and is priced at 1200 Now, the good thing about this is that you can find it anywhere, but at the same time, you're honestly robbing yourself of some money for what could be used for a couple other things to be a little bit better. Let's take a look at these options. The first of which is Quick Ball. The Quick Ball is one of my favorites but not quite my absolute favorite. The This is the strongest ball in our list, coming at that five times of catch rate per turn. I'm Not per turn, on the first turn exclusively. After that, it goes back down to the one catch rate. In other words, it's the same strength as the Pokeball. So if you don't catch it on the first turn, you might as well not use it. In Auras, you find this in Flarber. The second merchant often sells this, and you find it for a thousand each or ten thousand for a stack of ten. The special benefits behind this is that this is the highest catch rate for any six gen ball that's obtainable, other than obviously the Master Ball or any of the Master Balls lookalikes. So it's great for catching Pokemon at full health, it's great for quick catches, great for just getting it done. But this isn't my favorite. My favorite would be, the, not the Quick Ball, the Timer Ball. This also is a cost of 1,000. And it has a catch rate of 1 on the first turn, which is kind of opposite of the Quick Ball, of course, as the quick Timer Ball introduced in Gen 3 was basically something that's like, okay, we're going to make you wait for the reward. But it adds about 0.3 to the multiplier each turn, and it maxes out at 4. You find this in Rustboro, but this doesn't sound that impressive, right? Well, until you look at the stats. 
looking at it, it peaks at its power on the 11th turn, making this by far the best for longer battles, or Pokemon that are just stubborn and hard to catch. So, throw the Quick Ball on your first turn, let's say you don't catch it. That's your 5 times multiplier gone. Okay, you throw around some other moves, you throw around some Pokeballs, finally here, you have the, the Timer Ball, which for a thousand ends up being 4 times as powerful as a regular Pokeball and twice as powerful as the Ultra Ball, similar to how the Quick Ball is five times as powerful as the Pokeball, and two and a half times as strong as the Ultra Ball, which is great. The next ball on this list is the Dust Ball, which this is probably the easiest one on the list to use in general. This has a catch rate of 3.5 at night and in caves, otherwise if you use it at day outside, it's only a catch rate of 1, but that's actually not that bad, because you can get this in Flarber, it's fairly cheap, again only a thousand, and the special benefit is all you have to do is play at night to gain the benefit. If you're a daytime player, just adjust your clock to the time at which you play, but personally I find myself as more of like an evening to night player, so this is definitely one of your go-to workhorse balls to use. The next one on the list is the Netball. Now the Netball is quite an interesting one. I thought about using the Dive Ball here as well, but the only thing is it only works well on water, or in water, or underwater, or whatever. Whereas the Netball works on water Pokemon, and on bug Pokemon. The thing about this is when you're on water, or surfing, or fishing, or anything like that, the only type of Pokemon that you're going to find are water Pokemon obviously. And yes, the dive ball does cover that, but the net ball covers that twice as well. As well as it covers bug Pokemon, which are pretty much just as common. So this one has a catch rate of three. So three times as powerful as the Pokeball, one and a half times as strong as the Ultra Ball. So again, stronger than the Ultra Ball, as well as cheaper. You find this in Rustboro, but the special benefit is that it covers the two most commonly found Pokemon types pretty much in the entire region, other than maybe normal type. But this is again a very reliable ball, and will give you a multitude of species that you can actually capture with this thing. The last one on this list is actually an interesting one. This one I use for more chaining Pokemon and stuff like that. If you're huge into shiny hunting, if you're huge into ability hunting, egg move hunting, or more of competition, this is the ball for you. This is a catch rate of three times in Pokemon already caught. Otherwise it's one, so I wouldn't recommend catching the Pokemon the first time with it, but after that the repeat ball is actually the best ball pretty much all around. If it's a day and if you don't have dust balls or anything like that, this is the ball that you go to. Again you find this ball in Rustboro. But, it gives you a, a lot of the special benefits of being able to just be like, okay, I'm going to go out and hunt this Pokemon. For instance, I'm breeding up a breeder, um, not Yamas, Cofferigus. Breeding up a breeder Cofferigus for me. So I was like, okay, what's a Pokemon that's easy to get that I can breed IVs into the Yamasks? Okay, I can breed Shuppets. So I'm going to go look out for Shuppets and get three IV Shuppets. There we go. This is pretty much the ball that's been the workhorse ball for that. Now, last but not least, because I know you guys would say it if I didn't put it on here, the Master Ball. There is no cost to this ball. It's pretty much a priceless ball. You can't sell it. You can't buy it. You can usually only get one per game. But there are ways around that, such as the lottery, or such as fans giving you stuff after a master rank contest or whatever. But this thing has a perfect catch rate, or a catch rate of 255, which translates to 100%. It basically makes the entire catching formula null and void. So it's going to ignore it, it's going to completely catch no matter what. As for the special benefits behind this really you would have had to just completely zoned out on what I just said. It has a 100% catch rate. Meaning, if you throw this ball, you will not fail this catch. 
Now, going back over everything, each of these previous five balls here are only a thousand each. When you compare it to the Ultra Ball, the Ultra Ball is more expensive for less power, even though you can find it everywhere. In other words, the Ultra Ball is a big ol' ripoff compared to these Poke Balls that are three to four to five times as strong as the regular Pokeball. Whereas the Poke whereas the Pokeball is 200, the Ultra Ball is six times the cost for just a catch rate of two. In other words, it's a huge ripoff you're being lied to, and I would not recommend sticking with the Ultra Ball for as long as you can. Granted, if you get your hands on an Ultra Ball, use it by all means. It's a great ball. It pretty much is a great ball. And I wish that the way that they did this is that the Pokeball would have the catch rate of 1, Great Ball would have the catch rate of 2, and Ultra Ball would have a catch rate of 3. If the Ultra Ball had a catch rate of 3, I wouldn't mind having to go through all of this. Because it's just as strong as the Nat Ball, it's just as strong as the Repeat Ball. But, because it's more expensive and less powerful, it's not worth it, guys. A couple more tips before I end this out is that I want to say that you want to buy your Pokeballs in sex of 10. The reason why you want to do that is because you basically get Premier Balls after every 10, and 10 is the minimum that you get. No matter what Pokeball you get, if you get 10 of them, you will get the Premier Ball. And again, the Premier Ball is the same as the Pokeball. And looking at the Pokeball, it may have just a single catch rate, but the thing is, if you need to just, I need to throw out a couple Pokeballs, then this is probably going to be the ball for you. If you do a lot of Pokeball shopping, or whatever. I would recommend you have just a bunch of like grind balls, just be like, okay, I don't care if I lose these. So that would be the Pokeball, the Premier Ball, as well as the Great Ball. But then, this pretty much will wrap this up for us. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you learned something, then feel free to leave a like. It would mean a lot if you'd subscribe to me. And hey, stop by, say, say hi in the comments. I'll pretty much say hi when I can, and I'll try and get back to you. But, thanks you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Krazak, signing out. See ya!